Well, guys, it's all over but the crying. Everything's over with on the tournament here in Florida, Harris Chain. I uh, ended up coming up just a little short. I was 21st. I missed it by five ounces making the cut. Uh, I'm trying to tell you how I broke down the Harris Chain and what I did here. You know, from my practice, how tough the practice was until how things progressed and changed to the day. Uh, and the day was the first day the wind didn't blow 25, 30 miles an hour, so it really made a difference in how you could uh, how you could fish because the wind was laid, you know, laid down a lot, and it just opened up a lot of new water, it cleared the water up a lot. So I kind of changed from fishing back in the backwater creek area like the first day I, and I was fishing a frog a good bit and a walking boss by Livingston that was kind of my two things I was trying to fish a lot of stuff on top and then the frog bite kind of died out right away for me the first day of the tournament and and I kind of moved out of the shallow creek areas and kind of got more out onto the lake the second day I was out there, uh, it really made a difference being close to deep water because we're here at Harris Chain in mid-May, mid to third week of May. So most info you research on the Harris Chain at Lakes is going to be January, February, March because that's when everybody fishes Florida Lakes. But Florida Lakes are actually, I think, better in May and June than they are in the winter months because the fish are going crazy feeding, chasing shad, and they're really great lakes. Every time we've ever fished any Florida lake in May, June, it's been great. So top water is my favorite thing to do, and it's most people's favorite because it's the most fun way to catch fish. So top water is what I targeted. You know, I started out with my Livingston walking balls, and every time I'm fishing anywhere in Florida, uh, chrome black is my favorite color. That chrome is just a good color in this Florida tannic type water and it just has a good flash to it. It's good in the sunshine. It's good about any time, anywhere. So I throw that walking boss. The walking boss is the easiest bait to walk the dog with, better than any spook type bait. It's designed specifically to be easy to walk and so and to cast far because it's got the sound technology to chip and the battery in this bait that has the shad sound in it which helps fish eat the bait better even when you pause it they'll come back and get it when it's just sitting still because it sounds like a dying shad sitting there on the surface fluttering so that's what I love so much about it but you can cast it a mile and being good with top water you need to be able to cast it a long way so the equipment's really important right, real quick my equipment is the 7-4 big top water rod it's my Randy Howell signature Daiwa Tatula Elite Rod, big top water, 7.4 medium heavy, got a slightly shorter handle on it so you can make long casts and hold it close to your body when you're working the bait like this without that being way up under your elbow here. That's what I like. That's why we designed it that way. The Tatula Elite Long Cast Reel, this reel is made to cast baits a long ways, the longest casting reel on the market. And 50 pound die with J braid or 55 pound die with Samurai braid, that's the two braids I use on my top water. So I cover a lot of water with it. I stay out. I look for that water that, and anywhere on the Lowrance Sea map, it'll show you. Most of your mapping will show where your deeper contour lines come close to the Kissimmee grass, into curves, bends, points, stuff like that. So I started this morning kind of searching for that, and I found a brand new area I never even fished before, and pulled in there with a the walking boss right on this corner of this point, and boom, I catch a three and a half pounder. That gets my day started good. And then, you know, keep on moving along and all of a sudden one or two fish chase bait up in the grass, in the Kissimmee grass. So I kind of transitioned from the top water because I need the fish to use plastic and I changed up to the, the Yamamoto D-Shad. And this is a pink one. I didn't use pink one, but I am totally ran totally out of the pearl white. The D-Shad has that diamond shape tail on it and it's got the same salt and additives like the Cinco has. So it's heavier, it's had a shimmy to it when it falls. You can cast it better on a bait caster uh, and it just works way better than any soft plastic jerk bait to me. And you can hook fish better on it because it's soft enough to hook them on it. So I throw that just on a, sing just a single uh, four alt HD 
uh, Daiichi HD uh, X point hook. That's my favorite hook, and that doesn't bend. You can use it on braid, and I throw it on straight braid. Everything you throw in Florida, when you're up in that Kissimmee grass and heavy cover, you want to be using braid. No need to play around with fluorocarbon because fish will bite it. They don't see the line. They're in that grass. They're not seeing the line. All they see is your bait. I promise you that. You get just as many bites on the braid as you will anything else. But I use the 50 pound Daiwa Samurai or J Braid and Samurai 55 pound, same reel, 8 1 retrieved. And then this rod is the skipping jig rod. This rod is made for skipping a jig under docks, mostly, but I use it for skipping anything. I skip this Cinco and, the, and those saw plastic jerk baits a lot. It's, it's a heavy action rod. Uh, it's just a great setup for that. So I ended up catching probably over over half to three quarters of my fish first day and the day on this rod and that bait. That's why I ran out of them. I only had four packs and I went through all four packs of them. And so that it, it, that was kind of my one-two punch. I was throwing a buzzing, kind of like a buzzing shad type pogey tail swim bait a little bit, kind of stirring them up and I'd run it through there. And I'd catch a few on that, but a lot of times they would roll up behind it or slap at it. And then I'd lay it down, grab this D-shad, throw it back over there and whack, and I'd catch them. They'd always hit that as a follow-up bait. So I'd use the top water Livingston walking boss and that buzzing, you know, almost like a buzzing toad or buzzing shad to just kind of get the fish to react and show me where they are to locate them. And then that was my follow-up one-two punch with that bait. So remember you come to Florida, the Harris Chain Lakes, I didn't find a lot because we had 25, 30 mile an hour winds in both practice days. So really my practice was in the tournament. So I, I did decent for not having a very good practice. Uh, but hopefully you come here, uh, just remember target those deeper grass lines, have deeper water close to them and look for bait fish and shad. Look for the birds standing along the shoreline. They give you a giveaway in the trees and the heron birds They're always chasing bait. That's a good way to know where the bait fish are. So that's the two things I did and it's kind of how I ended up uh, in the tournament just a little bit short but caught a lot of fish caught 25 pounds a day. Ended up with right at 40 pounds for two days which was five ounces short. But I love it down here in Florida, and I hope you guys have a good luck. You come down here to this Harris Chain. There's a lot of great lakes here. That's the deal. Uh, good luck, you guys. Appreciate you following. I hope this helps you when you come to Florida fishing. And uh, if you do, send me some info, some pictures on uh, Instagram, Facebook. Let me know how you do. See you guys next time on the water. God bless. 21st, caught me about 25 pounds. They had a great day of fishing. and it still come up short, so it's the agony of defeat. We'll get them next time. See y'all.